Welcome to your building elements module on masonry walls. This module will introduce you to basic masonry construction used in residential buildings. It starts with the fundamental issues of dam proofing of masonry wall. It then looks at brick walls with various coverings and openings, including details of jams and lintels for fenestration. It will finally discuss details for stone walling. It will be useful if you've already done the module on walling materials. The associated reading starts with the discussion of the damp proof course. The damp proof course is a very important element that needs to be understood as it acts as a barrier to the passage of moisture into the building. There are specific requirements for how a DPC should be applied and this is important to understand both in terms of the details that are provided in the text as well as the diagram that is provided in the reading. There are different types of materials that are used for DPC. You don't need to know all the details about them, but you should know what these materials are and how effective they are in working as a DPC. There will also be expense to be considered. In this sense, there is lead and copper as well as bitumen, bitumen being one of the more economical ones that have been used in the past and polyethylene sheets, which are now used quite regularly. In addition to these flexible materials, there are also semi-rigid materials like mastic asphalt, or more rigidly, slate or brick that can be used as DPC as well. Considering the importance of DPC in the construction of buildings, it is also important to recognize that the heights of these DPC would change if it was in the context of a cavity wall. So please pay extra attention to that section. Moving to solid wall construction, we start looking at how these walls are finished. For the most part, we will be discussing the rendering of a surface using some kind of mixture of lime, cement and sand. And these can be considered in different types of renders. Once again, we do not need to know all sorts of details but we should be able to identify these different types and understand the advantages and disadvantages of using them. We have discussed here smooth or wood float finishes, spatter dash, scraped finish, textured finish, pebble dash or rough cast finish. In addition to rendering a wall, you could also hang slate or tile. The size of the slate or the tile is less important, but it is important to recognize that these will be directly nailed onto battens and counter battens, and these need to be attached to the wall at certain distances. In the drawing detail, you will notice that the slate and tile hanging have very similar construction. One of the important things to notice here would also be the layer of insulation that is provided behind the slate or tile. This leads to the discussion on internal insulation as well as vapor barriers that need to be considered. Once we've figured out the finishing of a solid wall, we can now move on to the issue of creating openings within the wall. Of course, in a solid wall, we will now need to create doors and windows and different kinds of openings. For this, we need to particularly understand the idea of jams and rebates. The discussion on rebated jams, as well as the diagrams provided, will help you recognize how these things will accommodate doors and windows into the opening of the wall. After looking at the sides, we now move to the head of the opening. This has a particularly important role to play and also needs to handle the weight of the building above it. This leads us to a particular discussion on lintels. We may not need to pay much attention to casting or pre-stressing of different concrete lintels, but you need to understand what a concrete lintel is and how a concrete boot lintel, for instance, might work in relationship to a window or door opening. Once we recognize the context of a lintel as a supporting member, 
This can also be extended to the details of steel lintels. Probably the most extended and useful discussion would be for the use of bricks, whether it is for lintels or for brick arches. There's a set of different types of brick arches mentioned which you need to understand and identify. Semicircular, gauge, two-ring arch, segmental arch or flat camber arch. The discussion on how these arches are constructed and how the brick is prepared for this needs to be understood. Once again, looking at the diagrams carefully alongside the text will be particularly useful in understanding the construction of these openings. Pay close attention to the idea of centering as this is relevant to how arches are constructed. Moving on from brick walls, we now look at stone walls. They are fundamentally two different types of rubble or stone wall construction that we will be focusing on. One as a random rubble core construction and one squared rubble construction. Clearly a random rubble will use stones of all shapes and sizes which are laid within a mortar while a squared rubble requires these stones to be cut to even sizes. These could be uncoursed or laid in a rough manner or could be coursed so as to maintain some sort of horizontal connection between the layers. Other forms of stone walling include polygonal walling. We do not need to pay much attention to flint walling but we should understand what ashlar masonry joints are including edge cuts to form channeled or V joints which emphasize the shape of each stone. This kind of focusing on the joints and the stone as an aesthetic formula also leads us to recognizing the different kind of tooled finishes that are used in stone construction. Particularly focusing on the diagram provided, we should be able to identify these different finishes. The discussion on stone walls also then leads to a particular issue of cornices and parapets. Please look through that carefully to understand how different types of slate cramps or metal cramps are used in ensuring the placement of the stone cornice. The use of different kind of weathering devices to protect the stone would also be valuable. While these details are important, we also need to understand, similar to the brick construction, the use of lintels and arches in stone. Of particular importance will be the terminology that is used in this case, represented through the diagrams, focusing on the keystone, the visseur, the stepped extradados, and the cross-setted visseur. That's it for this module. See you guys in the next one. Thanks.